the best race, maybe, I have seen in the past year, two. Definitely the best so far this season, in my opinion. Just chaos. The last two laps being insane. The joy of Checo winning. The sadness of Max exploding. Well, not him. His tyre. If he had exploded, that would be quite something. But, as always, we've got to make this pretty snappy because there's a lot to go through. So, this is Azerbaijan, in my opinion. I'm going to start, I'm going to do it a bit differently this time, instead of going from race winner to loser, I'm going to go through in order of, you know, the Mercedes drivers, the Red Bull drivers, the McLaren drivers, like that, down to the Haas drivers, because it's just, it's just easier to do, and it's, le and then that way it's less of high scores to low scores, and more just a, a nice spread of scores, starting off, of course, then with Lewis Hamilton, and wow, um, a decent race um, up until the incident, which, which I'll talk about in a second, but a decent race. I don't say good because actually he started second and he was en route to finish third, um, when, which when you're in a Mercedes, you can't be doing that really. You cannot be dropping places unless you spin or something, which he didn't do. It was a pit stop error. I understand that there was a bit of a long pit stop um, because the Alpha Tauri was coming out. But at the same time, Azerbaijan is not a circuit that's hard to overtake at. I, I hate to say it, but I do expect Lewis to do that. He's built such a reputation where I expect him to do that. And if he's not doing that, for him, that's not that's not good. He needs to be doing more than Checo is in a second Red Bull. Because the Mercedes is quicker than the Red Bull. I, I, that's my opinion, is that Mercedes is still quicker than the Red Bull. Unless it's a really, you know, like a Monaco circuit or something. But 7.6 for Lewis Hamilton. Um, and I'm going to go straight on to Bottas because I've got to be a bit snappy with this because obviously there is so much to talk about, the Pirelli tyres and it. We'll get on to all of it, but Bottas first with a 6.5 is what I've given him. Just a shambolic race overall, really. Um, poor quali in 10th and scoring no points, finishing 12th. So, you know, he's been beaten by Raikkonen. He's been beaten, you know... It's just not acceptable in a Mercedes that actually this year have competition from Red Bull. And at the start of the season, okay, you know, Russell should get the car, but he might not. I think if Bottas keeps this up, Russell has to get the car. For Mercedes' sake, he has to, because Bottas can't keep doing this. And it's not it's not the first time that this has happened. When Even when Mercedes aren't as quick, Bottas is tenths and tenths and hundreds hundreds is less, tenths and tenths slower than Hamilton, you know, if he was a tenth off, you know, it's not great, but it's Lewis Hamilton, it's fine, That that's where he needs to be, but this is unacceptable, F from a Mercedes, Mercedes stand, stand point, they can't have this any longer, or they're going to get beaten in the constructors, so, you know, he's getting beaten by the next guy to talk about, Max Verstappen, oh, should have won the race, shouldn't he, should have deserved it, you know, after the pit stops, he smashed it with the strategy, the team smashed it with the strategy, he smashed it with the pace, had fastest lap, and then the tyre just went, poof, blew up, I mean, Pirelli cannot make tyres that will explode, literally explode, in the middle of a race, because not only is it dangerous, extremely dangerous, 200 miles an hour and your tyre explodes, you are going into the wall at a hell of a lot of Gs and someone could have been severely hurt and we're lucky that everyone was fairly okay, um, apart from a bit shaken up and obviously for Verstappen, extremely disappointed. But if you look at his actual race, then it was all good, it was all good, it was all nice, um, Hamilton wasn't catching him as well, he had Perez as the buffer kind of between him and Hamilton, and it looked like another great race when it looked like he would be, you know, 14 points ahead instead of still only four, so I've given him an 8.2, and uh, and yet, you know, 
unlucky. There's nothing he could do. The tire exploded on him, and it, you hate to see it, but happens to some people. The sport can be cruel in the old Formula One, and today for Verstappen it was, or actually yesterday. Um, anyway, Sergio Perez, another race win. Is he going to be the first one to really get to grips with that second Red Bull car um, since Ricardo? I think yes. I think we already saw that, although he's had some poor performances. I think that's genuinely just that qualifying has been quite manic and he's had the unlucky side of it. And I think when it's been quite a normal quality, like Imola, he's qualified second. Uh, and then, you know, in certain races, he just doesn't perform. He's had a lot of uh, bad luck and a lot of just one off bad races. But for most of the time, when he qualifies down in 6th, 7th, he seems to come up quite well to 4th. Uh, and now, obviously, he's gone and won the race. His first podium for Red Bull, and it's a win. So, yeah, 8.4, because he held off Hamilton beautifully. Yes, I know Hamilton went straight line, turn 1, but, you know, he did a good race. 8.4 is very deserved, um, because he's where he needs to be, just behind Verstappen and ahead of both the Mercedes. That's the ideal world. I don't think anyone expected it, though, but he's done it. Anyway, Lando Norris. What a weird race for Lando. Um, I mean, I'm happy. It's a great race. P5, um, after qualifying sixth, three-place penalty, down to ninth. And then the beginning of the race, he was just an absolute turtle off the start. Reaction speed of 18 centuries. Oh, I've dropped my pen. Um, but, yeah, reaction speed of nothing, or maybe it was a car, I'm not bashing Lando, I'm just saying, it was a terrible start, dropped down to 12th, he was battling with Ricardo, his teammate, got the better of him to be fair, uh, got overtaken but then overtook him back, and then what a charge at the end, um, like beautiful, could have got third, very easily could have got third if Gasly and Leclerc in their little battle at the end had something had gone wrong, so yeah, fabulous from Lando, 8.1, um, the only reason it's not super, super high is because, obviously, he messed up in quali. He messed up in quali um, with the red flag scenario. I guess it's not really his fault, though, because the engineer probably was m more at fault, you'd have to say, I guess. But, you know, I've watched the footage. As close as it was, Lando does kind of decelerate, accelerate, and it's a red flag. He's got to know what to do there. But 8.1, nonetheless, incredible recovery. His teammate, Daniel Ricciardo, not ideal. We thought this would be his weekend. He looked absolutely speedy. He looked rapid in FP1. He looked rapid kind of throughout the weekend, really, um, until it got to the bits where the points are scored. Quali was nothing special, but he. I, I expect from Daniel Ricciardo a poor quali to mean an epic recovery race, that's the old Ricardo we knew, in this McLaren it's just not possible, he's just not with it, and 7.8 is the maximum I can give him, as much as I love Danny, it's just, he's just not clicking with the McLaren, and with that showed today, uh, in, a, in a race where there was so much havoc, he really didn't capitalise, finishing ninth. Uh, that could have, could have been a podium, say, if he had been high up, and with the talent it could have been, but you know, whatever. Um, I guess you can say that about anyone. If they were high up, they would have got a podium. But moving on to the pole sitter, Charles Leclerc. And the beginning of the race, obviously, just dropped down to fourth straight away. Not straight away. He actually led into turn one. Uh, but then down the straight, Hamilton so much quicker in a straight line. The Ferrari was just not set up race pace-wise. You know, quality, they were, they were decent. You know, he wasn't pole pace, but lucky that Sonoda um, crashed and that, he inherited pole, essentially. Oh, no, he didn't. He was at pole, but then the red flag. So it wasn't a, a clean pole. It wasn't really on merit. But, you know, you get lucky, you take it. And he did, but he didn't quite get the result he probably would have wanted. Fourth isn't bad by any means, but when you look at what he could have been, it could have been a win, couldn't it? So 8.0 because... Uh, he was fighting Gasly at the end, and he even overtook Gasly, then got re-overtaken, then was literally going around the outside every single turn, or uh, you know, or down the inside, but Gasly was just a bit quicker. Um, yeah, the Ferrari is quicker than the Alfa Tauri, I thought. Uh, I've been proven wrong. I'm pretty sure at the end that Alfa Tauri was quicker. That wasn't just Gasly's driving, because Leclerc is not a bad driver. Um, you know, 
Maybe the Alpha is just quicker because Sonoda had a good race, but we'll get on to them. First, we have to talk about Carlos Sainz, who had a bit of a nothing race, really. Um, it was just very whatever. You know, he crashed in quali, which you just can't do because if it was a big one, he could have missed out on the race. So points knocked down for that. Race, he locked up. Um, points knocked down for that, went right down the order. Then he just had an okay race, picking up uh, a few points, whatever, 7.8, because... I can't really talk about much because apart from his little, uh, little whatever lock up, I think it was, um, and into the escape road. There's nothing else really happened for him, um, but I can tell you something big that happened for Sebastian Vettel because that is the man who I talk about next. And wow, Seb, glorious, uh, and what you're about to hear is the biggest score I've ever given someone in these little rankings. 8.8 8 for Sebastian Vettel. He's not had a good season. The, the Aston Martin has been slow, um, but not today. Driver of the day, rightfully so. Beautiful drive from Sebastian Vettel. Qualified in 11th and finished in second. That's absolutely beautiful. You know, yes, he benefited from the mistakes, but you have to be there to benefit from the mistakes. So, yeah, outstanding drive. Just, he had unbelievable pace. He was he was leading the race. He led, like, two laps. So, yeah, beautiful from Seb. Oh, beautiful from Seb. Um, and 8.8. .8. Then his teammate Lance Stroll was uh, the first victim of the Pirelli tyres having C4 in them um, and yeah coming down the straight, the beginning of the straight and just explodes uh, the rear tyre and it was scary, I was genuinely just like oh no, that is a big crash, you know when there's a big crash uh, and, and and you know it's an even bigger crash when you hear on the radio he's saying get me out, get me out, like he thought he was going to get T-boned because he was just on the track, a lot of debris, a lot of smoke he, I I completely understand that he was absolutely scared out of his boots and I would have been I would have been way more because that must be terrifying to be going that fast and just to suddenly just boom into the wall huge huge shunt um but 7.8 because his actual race was just a bit meh uh, he wasn't doing bad but um he, he wasn't doing anything special um it would have been probably just an okay points finish I, I think I'm not, I'm not really sure I wasn't really following Lance Stroll's race unfortunately but Whatever, 7.8. It was one of those races that you can't really say... You can't really rate highly or lowly. Lowly? Lowly? Low... You can't really rate... I don't know if that's a word or not. Anyway, Pierre Gasly. P3. First podium of the season for Alpha Tauri. And a lovely one. Last two laps after the restart. And he was on fire, wasn't he? Absolutely speed. Um, Overtakes Leclerc down the straight... Defends Leclerc for the first part of that lap. And then just takes it. P3. I don't know how he did it. He didn't know how he did it. On the radio, he said, he said, I don't know how I've done this. Um, and he just kind of, he qualified fourth. Great qualifying. But he just kind of slipped back. Perez overtook him. And he just, I just thought, like, it's just going to be like a P6 or something. You know, it's a decent race. But, oh, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. To P3. P3. Beautiful 8.2 there for Pierre Gasly. Um, and yeah, that's a lovely score. It's going to probably whack him up the pecking order just a little bit. Um, and his team... Something's fallen over. Anyway, his teammate Yuki Tsunoda had a race. Um, interesting race. Obviously, qualifying was good for him. But also, he crashed. So, I think even his... He had said, like, mixed feelings because he crashed. Um, the race quality driving from Sonoda, uh, a lovely couple of overtakes down the straight, um, I've given him an 8.0, because it, it it's a good, it's a decent race really for Sonoda, P7, highest, highest finish in Formula 1, and maybe the Sonoda train is well and truly back on, it's on his way, it's about to leave the station for France, and um, yeah, will it be a good one in France, who knows? Probably not, because France is absolute sh Anyway, Fernando Alonso, quality race. A lot of points that Alpine need, especially with Ocon DNFing, so I've given him an 8.1. Kind of went under the radar. Great restart for him, um, and 
everything was just really really nice i really enjoyed uh like the onboard of him at the restart just very smooth all the stuff he was doing um you know we didn't go it perfectly but it's probably uh as as well as it could have gone with the circumstances 8.1 I'm, I'm, I think he's got to be happy, Fernando. He's got to be happy, uh, considering I don't think Alpine are quite as quick as they hoped at this point in the season. Aston Martin looking like they might a- actually have overtaken them. Um, we, they, you know, they look like the slowest midfield car, but I do think Alpine might be the slowest now. Um, I think it probably goes McLaren, Ferrari, Alvatari, Aston Martin, then Alpine. Um, it's really hard to tell. It kind of depends on the circuit. The other Alpine man, Esteban Ocon. I've given him a 7.8. He retired very, very early. All I really have to go of is quali, which wasn't ideal. Um, Not getting into Q3, but he seemed like he had decent pace. Um, Maybe on a bit high there, but um, I think a 7.8 is just kind of, again, it's whatever. I can only really judge him on quali. I can't knock points off for the DNF. It wasn't his fault. Um, He just had, yeah, just broke the car, just broke, obviously unfortunate nothing i nothing he or i or the team could do so kimi raikkonen up next um smooth transition into a kimi raikkonen points paying position p10 for the iceman and uh that was a lovely race um again went under the radar but really really nice i enjoyed it and i've given him an 8.0 um i had it as a 9 originally um but there you go 8.0 i've changed my mind right there i had it as a 7.9 i've changed it to an 8.0 because it's points it's points for alfa romeo it's important points because if william have a couple good races if william just you know they said that that bat some races are going to be absolutely shocking some races they're going to be really on the pace um and when those races come around where they're really on the pace if it is true then Alfa Romeo have got to have a nice bank of points already previously stacked up. Antonio Giovinazzi. Uh, he had a bit of a, a dead race, really, didn't he? Um, close to the points, but behind his teammate. Uh, with all the chaos, I kind of thought maybe he could have got points, but no. Uh, crashed in qualifying, which sent him out in Q1 like Lance Stroll. Uh, and for that reason, he gets a 7.7 um, because Lance Stroll got a pity point for nearly flipping dying and then Giovinazzi didn't nearly die. So he only gets a 7.7. Uh, George Russell also gets a 7.7 because he was just a bit meh. Um, and if he wants to get Mercedes, see, I need to see some, some, faster, some faster weekends because at the moment, I don't think he's built a case... Um, for that Mercedes seat. I think he should still get it, but this season he needs to build a very strong case for that Mercedes seat. Um, he needs points, basically. He needs to get points. If he doesn't get any points this season, I think that is going to be touch and go whether he gets the seat, um, which I'd hate to see him not get it, but yeah. 7.7. Latifi, uh, the other Williams driver, uh, finished bottom of the um, people who didn't DNF. I don't know what I don't know what to say. Seven point six because he he should be quicker. I know it's a Williams, but he needs to beat the Hasses and um, Hamilton went off. Didn't beat Hamilton. I guess that's fair. Hamilton didn't wasn't really that far behind, but should be beating the Hasses in my opinion. Um, yeah, I I don't know how he's losing to the Hasses of Schumacher and Mazepin. Schumacher would be acceptable. No, I'm kidding. Both of them he needs to be beating. Um, uh, second year of F1 now, you know, he's not a rookie anymore. But yeah, Nikita Mazepin. You know what, I'm going to do the, the Haas boys in one because they both got a 7.7 for me. Um, very nice races, 13th and 14th. Um, you know, high, well, some of the highest bef- finish for Haas, I think, because of obviously how many DNFs there were. But, you know, it's still lovely, lovely positions. And I do think they could get a point now. Uh, at the start of the year, I said no. Now I think, yes, I think one of them will get a point. Probably Schumacher, let's be honest, but one of them will get a point. A little prediction for you, but 7.7 for both of them. Um, And here are the standings now. As you can see, they're all there. Scrolling down the page. um, uh, It's a lovely championship fight we have on our hands. But um, that's all uh, I have to say. A quick bit on F2. Yuri Vips. Incredible job. Um... Yeah, I, I don't really have much to say on it, really. Just well done, Yuri Vips, and the F2 looks exciting. Anyway, that is all. 
Uh, there's all your ratings. There's your IMO for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. What a race. What a race. It's going to be one to remember. Um, I'll see you in France. Well, I won't. I'll see you before that. Don't worry, there'll be a video then. But the next IMO for France, don't get excited because it's going to be a rubbish, rubbish race. Uh, and if Hamilton wins, I um, the IMO will be five minutes long. Um, that's the whole no. I shouldn't have said that, but yeah, that's a promise. If Hamilton wins, the IMO is five minutes because I don't want it to happen because I want Verstappen to build a bigger bit of a gap because I still think the Mercedes is going to be quick. I've, I've got so much to say, but I'll say it in the France video. I'll see you soon.